Hey there, and welcome to another Health Essentials Podcast. I'm John Horton, your host. Slowing things down can be good for your heart, a simple way of explaining why beta blockers are so commonly prescribed. The medication dials down your heart rate and relaxes your cardiovascular system. It's the ultimate chill pill and a cornerstone treatment for a wide range of health conditions. We're going to spend today chatting with cardiologist Tamana Singh to learn more about beta blockers and how they're used. Dr. Singh is one of the many experts at Cleveland Clinic who pop into our weekly podcast to demystify medicine. Now let's find out how beta blockers work and why, in some cases, they may be able to add years to your life. Dr. Singh, it is always great to see your name on the guest list. Uh, I just love that this has become a regular thing. Oh my gosh, I love it too. I love talking to you. Well, we we love that you come in and give us a little bit of time. Um, And today, uh, you're here to talk with us about beta blockers. Um, And I got to tell you, I love that this medication is referred to in some circles as chill pills, uh, given the effect that they have on the heart. Uh, can, can you walk us through kind of how the medication can help your ticker stay uh, cool, calm, and collected? Cool, calm, and collected. I've actually never heard the chill pill uh, analogy, but I may start to use that. So thank you. Um, so beta blockers are a class of medications that block beta receptors. So if we had to describe beta receptors, there's a number of these receptors on different organs and we can focus on the heart. And these receptors tend to get stimulated or activated by stress hormones. Stress hormones commonly are things like epinephrine or norepinephrine. And once these little suckers bind to those receptors, they start to rev up your heart rate, rev up your blood pressure. When they act on our blood vessels, they cause constriction of those vessels. Um, So everything kind of gets heightened and stressed and, you know, quote unquote, alive, right? So beta blockers kind of prevent that all from happening. Instead of allowing epinephrine and norepinephrine to uh, attach to beta receptors, these blockers block those suckers and they prevent this increase in heart rate, prevent this increase in blood pressure. So they um, certainly do kind of help people get more calm, cool, and collected. Yeah. So it sounds like it kind of kind of tamps down that that, that adrenaline level that that people might feel when things get, get when they get worked up. Exactly. Okay. So why would someone be prescribed a, a beta blocker? Because I know we all kind of have that adrenaline that hits. What makes somebody a candidate to kind of get this? Yeah. So we use beta blockers really in, in different ways for different individuals. So since we're talking about the heart, the most common reason we may use beta blockers is to help enhance oxygen delivery to the heart muscle, which typically occurs between heartbeats. So you can imagine if we slow down the heart rate with a beta blocker, you have more time and there's more time between heartbeats to amplify that oxygen delivery to the heart. So for people who have heart attacks, we really want their tissues to heal. Um, For people who have weaker hearts, we might want to try to help those hearts improve and function. And so beta blockers can certainly do this. Wow, that's what, so by slowing it down, you just, you increase kind of the amount of oxygen going through and kind of let the heart kind of catch up with things and really get everything that it needs. Yeah, this is the best way I think beta blockers can be used for people who have some impact on the actual function of the pump. And the pump function can certainly be impacted by actual disease within the heart muscle and then certainly by the plumbing. You know, if the plumbing's not working right, the pump's not going to be working well or the pump might be failing. And so beta blockers can actually help with this process that we call it reverse remodeling, where they can help to um, limit the amount of heart cells that may die. They help to improve the function of the heart all by just enhancing oxygen delivery to the heart muscle. Now, the other wow. systems that we think about within the heart that beta blockers can be helpful for are you know, when there is any issue with the electrical wiring, the electricity of the heart. So I'm talking about arrhythmias, abnormal heart rhythms. I'm talking about skipped beats or premature beats. You know, anything where we may need to slow down the heart rate or subdue, suppress some of these arrhythmias. um, Those would be situations where we may also lean on beta blockers. And then I think one of the final things I'll say is, well, it can be related to the heart, but, you know, sometimes we have individuals who have generalized anxiety disorder or maybe people who become fearful of speaking in front of the public and they start to get a little sweaty, their heart rate rises. Beta blockers can actually be very helpful for people who have anxiety. So that's another way that we can use them. See, another reason to call it a chill pill. I mean, it, just, it, it does fit. Yeah. So, 
Um, when we're talking about beta blockers in the heart, um, you, when, when you think of heart issues, blood pressure is always a, a huge thing. Um, are beta blockers used to kind of control that? You know, beta blockers, I think in the past may have been used more um, aggressively or more consistently to control blood pressure. We have a lot of other first line antihypertensive agents, agents that control blood pressure. There are some beta blockers that are quite effective in helping to reduce blood pressure. Um, but more oftentimes than not, when we're thinking about whether we want to implement a beta blocker in someone's host of medications, the other questions that we're asking are, you know, what does the pump function look like? You know, what does the plumbing look like? Um, and that may help us be a bit more nuanced about the type of blood pressure medication we want to use and whether that would include a beta blocker. Yeah. It's just so wild that you take this medication and basically you're just, you're trying to slow the heart down almost so it can concentrate a little bit more on what it's doing and, and, and really make sure it's working correctly. Oh, certainly. I mean, I think beta blockers have been around for decades and decades. They are a mainstay. Um, of therapy, particularly after acute heart attacks, when we see impaired heart function, meaning the heart's weaker because part of it's just not moving well. Um, it's part of what we describe as guideline directed medical therapy for individuals who have quote unquote heart failure or some um, compromise in heart function again. Um, and like I mentioned, it can be used for electrical disturbances with the heart. So there's so many ways that beta blockers can be impactful. Um, they're, they're definitely incorporated in all aspects of cardiology. And it sounds like they're very common. Like if you've had a heart attack, is it pretty routine then that you just, you get put on beta blockers afterward? It really depends upon the heart attack. You know, back in the day, I would say that after most acute heart attacks, people would be on beta blocker therapy for, you know, about three years or so. But what we're finding now is those beta blockers could be the most impactful for people who've had heart attacks that have impacted heart function, meaning the heart function has become weak. You know, this is where that reverse remodeling process can certainly be helpful in um, improving mortality, improving cellular health, and hopefully helping that individual regain that pump function of their heart. No. By slowing the heart down, um, you always think like when you exercise and you do things, d does that impact it? Like if you're on a beta blocker, then is it harder to exercise or, or, or kind of, you know, rev things up? It really depends. So I see a lot of athletes in my practice and that's the question they have for me. You know, being on a beta blocker, is that going to lead to them not being able to hit their maximal heart rate that they see when they're cycling or when they're running? Um, and it really depends. And what we found in our athletes is that they're quite well um, they're tolerating low to moderate doses of beta blockers quite well. There are some individuals who may say that they feel like they're hitting a wall when they're getting to maximal intensity efforts because they just can't get their heart rate as high as before. Because as I mentioned, one of the ways beta blockers work is by preventing your heart rate from increasing as it would with sympathetic surges. Exercise is a sympathetic driven modality. What that means is heart rate needs to go up, blood pressure goes up to help you um, actually do the activity that you're trying to do. So, so that is, you know, one of the things that I often will hear in terms of causing fatigue or lethargy, you know, sometimes some people's, some people have lower resting heart rates. And when we add a beta blocker, it makes their resting heart rate so low that they do feel a bit tired. They do feel a bit fatigued because that heart rate is just physiologically too low and not high enough to allow for that person to do what they would do on, um, do their activities on a daily basis. So it really is kind of, you know, trial and error for that particular population. But most people tolerate these bends quite well. How common are beta blockers? Because like you said, they've been around a long time. So is this, I, I, you know, how many, how many people are on these? Yeah. So according to the Cleveland Clinic, about 30 million people in the United States are on beta blockers. 10% um, of the adult population is on beta blockers. Wow. And I think I saw a statistic um, quoting about 50 million prescriptions for beta blockers are dispensed annually uh, in the UK. So that's quite a bit of people. That, that, that is a lot. Of, that, that's a lot, a lot, a lot of people. Yeah. Um, what are, are, are there some certain names that kind of jump out as real common ones that, that are, are prescribed the most? Yeah. So metoprolol or toprol is probably one of the most commonly prescribed beta blockers. Um, carbetalol or Coreg is another one. That one's a bit more impactful on blood pressure reduction than metoprolol. Um, labetalol, propranolol, really anything that ends in lol, nabivolol, yeah. uh, natalol, bisoprolol. I could go on and on and on. They, they have all these names and I wish they just gave them like real simple names, but they're always a little complicated. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Now, now, now we've kind of touched on, on the whole safety of them, but, but, you know, I, I want to kind of 
look at it a little bit more because you know, as we've all heard, uh, when you listen to those uh, medication ads, you listen to the, them rolling through the fine print, there, there are issues. So, so what sort of side effects you know, might you deal with when it comes to beta blockers? Yeah, you know, I think the one thing to remember is that every medication has a side effect, whether it is listed or not listed, because we're all individuals who are going to respond to medications very differently. This medication has been around for decades and decades and decades, and it's been very well studied, very well integrated, not just in the cardiac space, um, but even in the neurological space um, and even, you know, in other um, organ fields. So that's one thing that I really wanted to emphasize in terms of common side effects, you know, typically because we are lowering the heart rate, we do hear about some fatigue, some lethargy which after about three to four weeks of acclimation to the, to the beta blocker um, can kind of go away, which is reassuring. Um, the dizziness can come from perhaps blood pressure that is a little too low on that dose. Um, I think from a male perspective, we certainly can see erectile dysfunction or sexual dysfunction. Again, quite minimal, but that's certainly you know one thing that my male patients will ask about. Um, dry mouth. I've definitely had a handful of individuals endorse diarrhea. I've had very few individuals talk about having nightmares. This is actually probably maybe in my younger uh, individuals. I haven't heard of nightmares in my older population of patients, but um, that's certainly one anecdotally that I've heard. But um, outside of, you know, maybe fatigue, dizziness, perhaps feeling cold, um, those would probably be some of the most common side effects. Right. Do you have to worry about interactions with other medications you might be on? Uh, it certainly depends. You know, I think um, if you're taking this medication with other heart rate lowering medications, they're certainly going to be um, really not the best combination. Um, but, you know, beta blockers can can really be um, um, impactful with any any medication. It would be so hard to kind of identify uh, which ones without knowing someone's individual medication list. Yeah. Well, and that's why I know they always, you just talk to your doctor about all the prescriptions and medications you might be on just to see if there is any maybe crossover issues. Of course. I think one thing that I always um, keep in mind when I'm prescribing beta blockers is whether individuals have lung disease. So things like asthma or COPD, um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, you know, those uh, diseases um, tend to be reliant on medications that are beta agonists. So if you're taking a beta agonist and a beta blocker, they can essentially cancel each other's out. We have a lot of patients with obstructive lung disease who are on beta blockers and they're doing completely fine. But if you find that someone is on a high dose beta blocker, or if you are on a high dose beta blocker and your lung disease seems to not be responding as well as it used to on your pulmonary medications, that would be an opportunity to talk to your provider and say, hey, you know, maybe something needs to be adjusted here. Um, because you may be someone who's kind of feeling that canceling effect. Yeah. Once you start taking beta blockers, are, are you on them for, for life? It really depends. So if you're taking a beta blocker, for instance, after an acute heart attack, you may really just complete a, an up to three year course um, of that medication. If you're taking a beta blocker as part of the Skyline Directed Medical Therapy to support your weaker heart, it's likely going to be a more long term medication, perhaps lifelong. Uh, if you're taking beta blockers in eye drops for glaucoma, probably going to be lifelong. If you're taking beta blockers for anxiety, and depending upon what other therapeutic modalities you're using to help control anxiety, it may be a short term or an as needed medication. It really just depends upon context. Okay. Now, now medications are, are just are wondrous given what they do. Uh, but I know we don't want to rely solely on them. So what other things can, can folks do uh, to try to resolve health issues, I guess, and specifically heart issues uh, that beta blockers might address? So for nearly all cardiovascular um, pathologies, exercise is going to be part of the recovery, the rehab, the prehab, all of it. I've heard that once or twice with you, I think. <laughs> um, that is my spiel. Um, so movement, exercise, and dental physical activity is very helpful in making your heart efficient. When it's efficient, it doesn't have to pump as often to get blood to where it needs to go at times when you need it most. Your heart becomes stronger with exercise, so you can pump out more blood with just one contraction. And so fitness is kind of a natural way to create this beta blockade effect. 
You've probably heard of a lot of people who are active or people who are getting into fitness. The fitter they get, the lower their resting heart rate. So that essentially is kind of this beta blocker phenomenon. That's interesting. I never thought of it that way, but but you are right. It does almost like you, the stronger your heart gets, it, it can kind of relax a little bit more because it's just, I guess it's pumping enough blood just on its own with each little burst. Yeah, exactly. And I do have a number of patients who sometimes are started on beta blockers. They start to incorporate lifestyle changes and exercise and they come to me and say, hey, doc, my heart rate's in the 40s now. Before it was in the 60s. Can I come off of my beta blocker? And I essentially say, hey, you know, you are really kind of optimizing oxygen delivery to your heart by having lowered your resting heart rate, you know, and then we can make a shared decision making to, to stop it if, if that's appropriate. Um, other ways that exercise can be helpful outside of lowering your resting heart rate. You know, again, it really improves oxygen delivery, not only to the heart muscle, but to the rest of your body. For people who have heart disease, the reason why we want people to exercise after heart attacks or for people with heart failure is because we can actually enhance blood flow to the heart muscle by generating tiny little vessels called collaterals. And this system of collateralization can often be, you know, a, um, a backup for, for that individual with significant heart disease by now having new routes of blood flow to the areas of the heart that just weren't getting adequate oxygenation. So there's a whole host of cardiac phenomenon that can come from exercise alone. Yeah, that makes that makes total sense. Um, so, so Doctor Singh, if we're your patient, how would you go about explaining why taking a beta blocker may be a good idea for our overall health? And from everything I've heard, it's the sort of thing that could even extend life expectancy. Certainly. Again, I think the first question is why are we using a beta blocker, or why is it needed? Yeah. Why, what, what, what's the cell? Give me the, the elevator pitch, <laughs> I guess, as to why this would be a good idea to take. Yeah. The elevator pitch, I think, would vary depending upon who I'm talking to. So if, if this individual has an issue with the pump, so the heart just not functioning appropriately, then the beta blocker can certainly improve mortality. Um, it can certainly help with this reverse remodeling process. Um, it can help with reducing perhaps events where people are accumulating a lot of fluid in the body or a lot of um, cardiac stress, quote unquote, in the body. Um, if I'm talking to someone who's got some electrical wiring issues, it can help reduce symptoms of palpitations. It can help reduce uh, malignant arrhythmias or deadly arrhythmias that can cause sudden cardiac arrest and death. It can control early beats that may be very stressful for an individual. Um, it can even potentially control arrhythmias to the point where someone may not need an invasive procedure to completely eliminate them. Um, if I'm talking to someone who has cardiac disease or coronary artery disease who had an acute heart attack um, with some pump dysfunction, my cell would be very similar to someone who has heart failure. It can help to improve mortality, help with this reverse remodeling process, perhaps help your heart get back to quote unquote normal. So there's so many benefits from, from beta blockers from a cardiac perspective. Everybody does not need to be on a beta blocker. It's not necessarily a risk stratification tool or risk reduction tool. It's really most appropriate in specific settings. Um, but because a lot of our individuals have heart disease in, in the world, right? It's the number one killer. Many of our individuals have heart failure. Many individuals have issues with the electricity of their heart. Um, this is why we see it being utilized in about 39 million people um, here in the States. Well, Dr. Singh, you, you explained that extremely well and i think we all have a little bit of a better understanding as to how beta blockers work and, and really just all, all the good they can do in, in those very specific situations which it sounds like affects millions and millions of people well i'm always happy to help uh, well thank you so much for coming in and uh and sharing your wisdom thanks for having me when it comes to treating heart conditions Beta blockers have three major selling points. They're effective, they're generally safe, and they're inexpensive. It's no wonder they're one of the world's most prescribed medications. If you liked what you heard today, please hit the subscribe button and leave a comment to share your thoughts. Till next time, be well.